Okay, welcome to um, the Strimsy community call on the 18th of May. Um, Jakob's uh, on uh, on holiday, so uh, he asked me to uh, to run the show this time. So if it's not up to his usual quality, I apologise in advance. Um, so it's the usual agenda. So we start with questions uh, and issues, which is a open forum. If anyone's sort of got any, uh, yeah, any questions or problems they want to to bring. Okay, so uh, I guess there are no questions or issues at the moment. Um, we've got uh, one PR here, which uh, I think is Shabam's um, about uh, an error message when cruise control fails to regenerate the rebalance um, proposal. So I think this has been open for a while and I know it looks like Paolo's looked at it. Um, what more are we um needing here paolo do you do you know what shabam yeah uh, actually uh i had a call with paolo and uh, kyle regarding this so this was just a workaround fixing the issue but after the call we have decided to look into it more deeply and sort of get a proper and a general solution for this so i'm i'm looking into it yesterday and today or like just before this meeting also i was generating things because i don't know something cracked some checksums i, I was getting some checks some issue while building the operator so yeah the plan is to I, i'll probably maybe close this maybe i'll close this and i'll open a new one with the new changes after like the after I get something from the changes, and also I'll get in touch with uh, Paulo and Kyle to discuss about this. Okay, that's that's great. If you could, yeah, just sort of if you're going to close it, just sort of leave a, a comment as to why yeah, you close it. That would be great. I, I, I'll leave a comment. Yes, Super, thank you. thank you. Thanks, Japan. Um, and we've got uh, a few different. Um, proposals to uh, just sort of uh, skim over. So um, the unidirectional topic operator proposal um, that we mentioned last time, um, that sort of got all the, uh, the required approvals. So I merged that on Monday. Um, and since then, we've got uh, a couple of new proposals that we've not mentioned on this call before. Uh, one from uh, Tina who just wants to uh, revise the algorithm um, in proposal 48, which has already been uh, approved based on, uh, yeah, sort of some knowledge that's come to light as uh, she's been working on the implementation. So uh, I think Jakob and Paul have taken a look at that, but um, yeah, Paolo, I know, I think you're the only other, uh, oh, and Paul, um, but Paul's approved it. So yeah, Paolo and I need to take a look at that. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get that merged for Tina. And the other one, which has only been open um, in the last sort of hour or so, um, is uh, this one about using server-side apply um, to get better interoperability uh, it's to do with applying labels. I've only sort of uh, had a very brief look through this. Um, but yeah, likewise, uh, if people could uh, take a look at that um, and see if it makes sense and leave any comments, that would be great. Any questions about uh, any of those proposals or uh, any other proposals for that matter? Sorry, Tom, I see that uh, this last proposal is in uh, in draft. Should we ask to the contributor if it's ready to review? <coughs> um, that's a good point. I mean, normally, if you... 
Yeah, we can ask and see what, you know, sort of how much he, uh, review he wants at this stage. That's probably a good idea. Um, I'll leave a comment after the, the meeting to save doing it here. So if there are no more um, proposals to talk about, we can go to the issue triage. So there's already been uh, a bit of back and forth on this one. Um, the issue seems to be um, some sort of race condition um, or some sort of bit of retained state um, going on. Uh, if you change the name of the, uh, the config map um, being named in the, uh, the config provider for a connector. So, um, you know, I think sort of Jakob's, um, yeah, sort of had some back and forth with this, uh, with the person that opened it. Um, it's not entirely clear what the, uh, what the problem is at this stage. Um, so I guess it might be worth trying to reproduce this or what do people think? Does that seem reasonable to people? Yes. <clears throat> yep. Do we think that's a, a good start or a help wanted? I mean, it's always difficult with something like this. It might be that it's quite trivial or it might be that it goes quite deep. Um, but if none, if sort of nobody here is sort of thinking that they might be able to uh, look at it soon, then I guess we could put help wanted on it. Yeah, I agree. Um, so there's uh, a user here who's trying to use the uh, the topic operator with uh, about 40,000 topics, which um, it's failing, failing the readiness probe. But uh, I think even if the re readiness probe wasn't a problem, I think 40,000 topics is uh, pretty ambitious for the, uh, the old topic operator, um, at least so. Um, yeah, how do we sort of propose to reply to this? I think we should probably just say, look, 40,000 topics is um, a lot more than the uh, old topic operator was designed to cope with. Um, and it's un we're not realistically going to sort of put engineering effort into trying to scale up the old topic operator to cope with that kind of uh, scale. Um, and it might be that the new topic operator um, could um, scale up to sort of something uh, a little bit more ambitious. Um, it's certainly been written that way. Um, but, you know, I think um, 
it's better just to, to close this and manage sort of expectations around the old topic operator. And, um, yeah, refer the, the user to the hopefully soon uh, soon to be delivered new topic operator. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. Yeah, we can use this this case uh, for testing the new implementation. I mean, I was a little bit cautious in how I worded that because um, so just sort of to go into how the the new topic operator works for a moment, um, it does try to sort of um, it's got a batching mechanism to make use of the batching available in the Kafka admin client. Um, which means that, yeah, you should be able to um, reconcile a large number of topics without putting so much load on the, the Kafka cluster and making use of sort of the, the, the batching that Kafka provides you. Um, but I think, you know, being realistic, 40,000 resources in Kubernetes, you know, if you've got 40,000 topics, then what large number of other resources have you got in Kubernetes? And, um, is that really at that sort of scale? Is that really the right way to be trying to to manage your Kafka cluster? Um, when I was sort of thinking about the new topic operator, I was certainly sort of thinking, okay, yeah, how many topics should we be looking at? It should certainly be in the the thousands. You know, I was thinking more sort of something like ten thousand would be realistic. Forty thousand is, you know, sort of um, obviously. Uh, quite a few times more than that. And I just think at that sort of scale, yeah, it might be that the, the Kafka side of things may or may not be the problem, but the, the cube side of things is also somewhat in question, I think. Yeah, maybe here there is an opportunity to segment the load, the load on different OpenShift cluster, each one with its own Kafka cluster. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Fede, but I'm not sure we should sort of try giving, you know, a person sort of opened a, you know, a particular issue. Um, you, they're welcome to sort of come back and, you know, ask on email or on Slack sort of recommendations for how to sort of re-architect, but I don't think we should be sort of giving um, that mm -hmm. sort of advice when responding to an issue. Yeah, I agree. Okay.
Tom, do you want to link to the proposal of the unidirection? Uh, yes, that's not a bad idea. Thanks, Paolo. Um, How to phrase um, the point about what is the right way of managing this number of topics? Do we really need to add? some any information like that yeah yeah let me that seem reasonable if you can read that which possibly you can't let me make it bigger does seem reasonable yeah. it's a typo yeah. won't fix rather won't fizz rather than won't fix thanks keith yep Do we have, oh, we don't have a won't fix. What have we got? Oh, well, we don't have a, a won't fix label. I guess we'll just leave it without. Okay, so this user wants to um, use node selectors at the, well, he says in the title at the pod level, and then he talks about the namespace level. And Jakob's replied. questioning whether it actually makes sense. What do people think our response should be? Maybe giving the user some time to come back and yeah. apply to Jacob's comments. See if they can demonstrate a, a use case. Yeah.
like that there is a typo in try 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 okay. you're right you'd think i'd pay more attention to the red squiggly under nine wouldn't you So this is uh, an interesting one. This user wants to be able to um, support uh, trailing dots in fully qualified domain names, which is fine and completely allowed in theory. Um, but in practice, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, and it happens to uh, to break, I think, in um, when yeah, building the subject, um, which probably doesn't matter yeah what I mean is we could sort of um, strip the trailing dot off when sort of generating the certificate the subject alternative name in the, the certificate um, and you know I think that would be fine if we could sort of then you know sort of maintain the the trailing dot in the rest of the code uh, I suspect that's what the user would want and I expect that would work um, it's maybe not completely certain. I don't know whether, um, yeah, clients that were um, using the resulting cluster and the certificate um, would then fall over because of the, the mismatch with the, the absent trading dot um, in the certificate. But I guess we can't know until we actually try, um, unless somebody already knows whether or not that's the case or wants to sort of mess around with open SSL. I mean, it might, it's, it's possible even that, you know, you'd think it would be specified as part of TLS somewhere. Um, but uh, I don't know if anyone's got encyclopedic knowledge of the, uh, the specs for TLS. Um, and can comment. So I think it's probably easiest if we we give this a try because uh, it doesn't seem completely unreasonable. Having a, a trailing dot in a domain name is allowed. So what do people think? I'm personally astounded that it's allowed. I never come across that before um i'm not doubt i'm not doubting you for a second but it's just like wow i never knew that yeah so it, it is um and there are certain places um where um it is actually used so if you um use dig to like query um domain name service you'll see that it adds the dot so that it's you know completely clear as to exactly what it is that it's queried um but yeah it's not it's not commonly used um but it can help avoid cases where um yeah where sort of domains get added to things um so it's not completely it's not just that it's allowed it does have you know particular uses i think i'm no dns expert i should I should add if that wasn't already clear um so, but yeah i mean he doesn't he's not completely clear about he says um excessive dns searches on the kubernetes cluster where i'm running kafka producers so i mean we can just sort of take that at face value that you know they've they've investigated this and found that that's the problem and you know alighted on this as a, a solution.
I think I think there are no restrictions in the name you can use for the sun, uh, but they must be valid host names, I guess, and also public CAs might impose other restrictions. So I don't think this is a valid use case. Sorry, Fede, could you repeat the first part of that? I didn't catch it. I mean, the specification does impose any restrictions on the uh, names, but they must be valid host names. This is the only requirement. Uh, and yeah, in addition to that, public uh, CAs might impose other restrictions on, uh, on the names you can use. Uh, so I'm not sure this is the valid use case, at least for this change. Maybe there are better ways to accomplish what, what he wants. I mean, just because public CAs might have different requirements doesn't make this use case invalid. I think, you know, if you, I mean, you don't have to use a public CA with Strimz, so whatever extra requirements they impose, you know, don't shouldn't be extra requirements that we then pass on to anyone wanting to use Strimzy with their own um, PKI. Yes, but the X509 specification requires valid host names. So I'm not sure that a trillion dot is a valid host name. Uh, like I said, I think it is, but I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure I can trade RFC numbers with you. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe it, it's either we sort of do the research and sort of, yeah, mm -hmm. are able to point to RFCs that sort of clarify the situation, um, which knowing RFCs, that's either a five minute job or a five day job. Um, or yeah, we just sort of suck it and see. Um, and it could well be that sucking it and seeing is the, the easier way forward, I think. Do, does anyone disagree? I mean, um, Fede sort of expressed it out there. I wonder if uh, anyone else has, has doubts about whether this is really a, a valid use case. Okay, so are we happy with that as a, a summary so far? Yeah. Do we want to add a, a good start or a help wanted? Yeah, maybe help wanted. I'm not sure it's a good start. Well, I don't think it's actually that difficult. It's just stripping off a dot when we create the certificate. Yeah, but it's the fact that around you have TLS, CA certificate and things like that. I'm not sure. It's a really okay. good start. Okay. I will be guided by you on that, Paolo. And the last one. Okay, so Grace here is um, trying to build on M2 um, and use that with Minikube. And I think when I looked at this earlier, there was also, it was Minikube with the Podman driver, I think. Uh, or at least I saw Podman mentioned somewhere. Oh, I thought I saw Podman mentioned somewhere. Yeah, could mention Podman in the comment above.
Any thoughts on this one? Well, I see that we have got some comments from Jakub and uh, Luke. So maybe let's leave some time to the user to come back. Yeah, that's a good point. It's only been open 10 hours. So should we leave that one for next time? Yeah, I will say yes. Okay, so I think that's all of the, uh, the issues we had in the queue. Is there any other business anyone wants to bring up? Okay, well, hearing nothing, then uh, thanks very much for your time, folks. And see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks very much. Bye. 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 Bye.